The thing with books as an adult, and why it's bad to hate reading, is you can't really get away with hating books the same way you can as a kid. I mean, you know, you'll see these snobby people on the L train that are like, I don't actually watch television, I just read. I actually just read books. I actually don't read articles, I really just read uh, fictional works by this author. Uh, and you know, you, you can't really do that like, like I would. I mean, I can't say... I don't read books. I actually just, uh, you know, I just watch Sex in the City and Game of Thrones on HBO. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't. For some reason, it, you can be snarky. You can be a snarky douchebag if you're a book reader. But you can't be a snarky douchebag as somebody who enjoys other types of media. I mean, I can't say to people, you know, I don't read books. I just read Trolls on Slash Dot <laughs> and watch Game of Thrones. Like that, that, that doesn't work. You can't be snarky. You can't be uh, holier than thou that way. And that's how I kind of got to this topic. But, you know, I, I, was, I was just thinking about all the people on the L train that they read these tattered, fucked up looking books, like these yellow, brown, disgusting books. They, they, they are like the super elite hipster. It's not even like, I don't read books that you can get in a store. I actually just read, uh, un, uh, you know, no, no longer produced or um, rare works that you can actually only face. It's like, oh, just shut the fuck up. I don't want to listen to your elitist crap anymore. But I'll meet these people on rare occasions if I go to a party or a birthday party or I go out eating and I go to a bar. I'm just like, just, just shut the fuck up, you douchebag. And you, you know who you are. You know you've met them if you've sat in the same seats that I have. It's like, you just go into the store and you look for the most yellow brown book there is. I swear to Christ, half the people reading these, they're not even fucking reading the book. They're not reading the book. They're just sitting there with that fucking thing there that's decaying so that they can say, look at me, I'm reading rare books. I'm, 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 I'm better than you. It just gets so tiring. And that's one of the things that kills me about the hipster culture. I don't really mind if if you listen to different music than I do, I don't care if you're open to art. I don't care if you're an, an artistic person. That's not what makes you a hipster. What makes you a hipster is your general condescending nature towards others, leveraged by your own obscurity that you create for the sole purpose of belittling others. I mean, like if I say, uh, you know, if there's a show on at, at a bar, and I'm like, oh, this is a cool episode, and you go, I actually only read books. I actually only read rare books. I'm not really into television. It's like you could just say, oh, I don't watch it. Is it a good show? Or you could say, I actually don't watch television. I only read obscure. Be like, just shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Like, let me just, seriously. But, you know, that, 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 that's, that's a rant for another video. But I digress. It's bad to hate reading. But a lot of kids hate reading. A lot of kids become adults that hate reading. And I want to explain why. And I'm going to do that while I work, because admittedly, I, d I simply don't have the time to actually, uh, you know, do these videos sitting down doing nothing when my table looks like the complete clusterfuck that you see in front of you. So I am going to be working as I do these videos. It's made easier by this, cam this camera microphone that I got, because I don't actually have to be looking at the camera in order for you to hear me, which is great. So a lot of kids hate reading, and you may think my kid doesn't hate reading, and you may ask him if he hates reading, and he may not tell you that he hates reading, but that's because they're afraid to, that's because they think they're going to get in trouble, that's because you're going to think they're dumb, or their other teacher's not going to, this is something that you're not supposed to say. But the reality is that a lot of kids really, really hate reading, especially in my generation. And I want to talk about why. I want to talk about why this is bad. I want to talk about how you get them to like reading. And I want to talk about what our public education system and what our teachers have done to make children hate reading and why they are at fault in a big, big way. So let's talk about my experience as a kid. And I'm gonna, I, I really do remember the first time I finally realized why it is that I actually hated reading. And it was uh, while I was doing, uh, reading something that I enjoyed. I forget the book. I think it was Mice and Men, uh, you know, ninth, tenth grade. I was enjoying the book because for a very, very short period of time, I wasn't reading it to, for the questions. I was reading it to enjoy it. See, what I used to do is I used to read the questions, and then I used to read the book. So that I would just read the questions, and then I would read the book, and then I would get all the questions answered, like, you know, what date did he go here? So if I saw a date, I'd write it down. If I saw them describing something, I would put the colors down, and all that stupid, dumb shit. And I wouldn't, and, and again, what's the, usually the teacher had time limits for how long you had to read the chapter and crap like that, so I wasn't reading it to read any of that horse crap. I was reading it just to get the fucking work done because there was, a lot of the time, there was an actual time limit. So, I, you know, again, you have to read 100 pages in two days, this, that, and the other. I was just reading. So I wasn't reading it to enjoy it. I was reading it to answer the questions. And this one time, I was reading it to not answer the questions, and I was actually enjoying the book. And that's when I realized how it is that kids come to hate reading. They come to hate reading 
because of school, because of crappy public education systems and crappy teachers that put this idea in your head that the only way to truly judge if a child has read a book is by these silly metrics, these silly metrics that ask you to describe crap that really has nothing to do with what you're fucking reading, that has nothing to do with what the author intended for you to get out of their story so that you can prove that the kid read it. And I talked about how metrics fuck up warranty repair centers in another video. I talked about how metrics make um, service centers focus on the wrong things. They focus on coming up with bullshit excuses to get you to not come back. They focus on uh, you know, not fixing your problem uh, completely because they want to spend the least amount of money. They want to show the company, see, I saved you money. And the same thing is true for reading. So the only metric that lazy public education professionals have come up with is coming up with these silly, stupid, dumbass fucking questions to figure out if you read the book. And the problem is that those questions have nothing to do with what the author intended. Shakespeare intended for you to enjoy his plays. He intended for you to enjoy them watched on stage. Shakespeare did not want for, for 8 and 12 year old kids all over the world to read the book and then to be asked what was in the what like painting was in the room when Othello was yelling at this person. What did he say that he was going to do with his sword before he killed him? Like Why not read in the, for that? And frankly you shouldn't be reading a fucking play. You should be watching it. Shakespeare did not intend for his work to be used to torture minors. If he knew, if Shakespeare knew while he was alive, that more people, more people throughout history would hate him than the people who loved him because his work was not used to be enjoyed, was not used on Broadway for shows, was not used in the theater, but was rather used to torture children, he probably would have said, fuck it, I'm not writing any of this shit. Let me see what else I can do with my life. And that's the really sad part. And I still remember this with SRAs, too. You know, there were these things when I was in fourth grade called SRAs. I don't even remember what the shit stands for. Uh, but what an SRA was, was it was this two- or three-page thing of text. And you would read it. And they were about anything. I mean, it was anything from a fictional... St you had fictional stories in SRAs. You had, like, a Hansel and Gretel kind of crap in SRAs. And then you had, uh, you know, a study of a manufacturing plant where they were talking about the productivity... Uh, with the workers when they're, you know, when they're fed something different. I mean, and some of this stuff was really actually interesting to me. And I found a lot of these interesting. So I, and, I, and what I was doing, I was doing the wrong thing. I was actually reading them. So instead of going to the end of the SRA and looking at the questions so that I could get them done quickly and read everything and get, just get the questions answered, I was actually reading it to enjoy it. And you know what the result was of me learning from SRAs? You know what the result was from all the ga knowledge I gained from reading the SRAs and doing the questions at a steady pace? I was behind all the other kids who were just reading the fucking questions. I was behind all the other kids that just read the question, answered the question, and moved the fuck on, and just skimmed it to get to the answers. And that, that, and that, that was horseshit. You know, all the other kids were on, like, the brown, and uh, I was still stuck in, like, the purple and the orange. They had colors to dictate where you were. And that shit just sucked. I st that's, that sucked terribly. And that's what public education teachers do. See, that they can't actually come up with an intelligent way to figure out if you have read the book. So they come up with these bullshit ways of figuring out if you've read the book that have nothing to do with the actual um, content of the book. They come up with this cheap, stupid shit. Like, they skim through it, and they come up with their questions so that they can give them, you know, like, uh, what was the color of the wall in the middle of Chapter 4? Like, I don't give a fuck what the color was of the wall in the middle of Chapter 4. And, it's, uh, you know, and the thing is, the reason they do that is because if you, uh, if you uh, put questions like, what do you think of what Othello said to this person in chapter 4, if you actually ask real engaging questions that actually get, make me, encourage me to write, encourage me to read, encourage me to use my fucking brain, which is the thing that I'm trying to get people to do with this channel, to recover from the public education system that taught them not to use their brain. When you ask that, kids can bullshit a little. They can bullshit and say, I think it was good. I think that was great. I disagreed with him. And what you should do is not just don't come up with these bullshit questions to figure out if they read the book just so you know they read the pages. What you need to do is come up with a grading system that grades them based on the actual response that they put in. And that's harder. And that, kind of, that requires a little more work. That requires that you not sit up on your desk like Mrs. Friedland did and read your fucking newspaper and flirt with Mr. Criaris while the kids are reading and coming up with answers to your stupid questions. You actually have to sit in there and encourage them to actually use their brain, to think, to enjoy, to work. But, but Mrs. Friedland didn't do that. 
Regular teachers don't do that. They come to work and they come up with the minimum that they can do so that they can fucking go home, so they can flirt with Mr. Crieras next door, so they can do whatever they want and, terror and come back and terrorize children the next day and make their forty or fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year and be done. But what they do is they don't teach you how to think. They don't teach you how to read. They don't teach you why you should like reading. And, you know, sometimes I take on projects. Sometimes I take on employees as actual projects. I'll have a position that, where I don't really need you to be at the top of your game. So, and when I have those positions available, I, uh, I often hire people that I wouldn't usually hire. I hire people that maybe grew up in poor circumstances who didn't have the op- you know, certain opportunities available to them. I hire people that may not come from great family backgrounds where they were... I, you know, I hire people that, you know, maybe have been drug addicts, maybe have been in jail, whatever it is. And the, the thing is, in those situations is, uh, I, I have one of those right now, and what I'm dealing with is somebody who doesn't like reading. And they're not particularly good at reading or writing, and they're discouraged by it because they're not good at it. And they said they weren't good at it because in school, you know, they just didn't like it. And... I, I was able to get her out of this mindset just the other day, and, and, and I think I'm, I'm getting somewhere with it so far. So what I did was I used a customer on her as an example. So there was a customer that came in. Uh, he was just the typical, like, exactly what I'm not looking for. Like, he asked all the wrong questions, like, how much is the part? How much do you make off of this? Why do I need this, that, and the other? And, you know, I don't know. I've I'm, I'm just never really liked those questions. I mean, I'm not allowed to go to your work and just say, excuse me, how much do you make? Well, I think instead of making 14 an hour, you should make 12 an hour. Like, I'm, I'm not allowed to do that. That's being a dick. But for some reason, when people do it to you, like, it's cool. And I, I've just never really been a fan of that. But anyway, he's asking all, I mean, all the wrong questions. And then he's like, why should I have this done? Why is it this much? Why don't you, you don't sell the part? Why don't you sell the part? I see it on here for this much. And the thing is, he, he didn't have it in him to say yes or no. Because some people say yes, and I respect that. And then some people say no to a job because they don't want it done for whatever reason. And I completely respect that. What annoys me is when it's not like a yes or a no. It's, a, it's like you're leading to a no, but you just want to keep bothering and bitching and bitching and bitching when I called you, uh, you know, pretty much 10 minutes after you dropped something off with a free estimate. And it's just it's bothersome and it's annoying. But and, and, and she's, she's like going on for 14, 15 minutes with the guy. And I, and I said... You know, just just transfer it to me. Do me a favor. Just transfer it to my extension. And she goes, well, what are you going to do that I didn't do? What are you going to... I've, to, I've told him the price. I told him the turnaround. I explained everything politely. What can you possibly do that I didn't do? And I say, just watch. So he came in because the thing was running like garbage. And it was, it was a MacBook that had a bad drive cable. So I, I talked to him about it. And he said, you know, well, I just don't get the pricing. Apple's willing to give me a new drive and cable for $100. And you're saying 125 for just the cable. And I said, sir, I wish I had known that you w- were able to get just the, the drive and the cable for, uh, you know, for, for $100. Because, I mean, I, I really, like, what, our goal here is to not waste your time and get you up and running as, as quickly as possible. And by leaving this here, I've wasted 10 minutes of your time. Had I known... Had I known that you had that deal, I would have I would have told you to use them. Now Apple, what they do often is they actually warranty the entire machine again after you pay for whatever flat rate repair service they've given you or whatever repair service they've given you. So you go there to replace the optical drive and you get it back and your webcam doesn't work, they're not gonna argue with you, they're just gonna replace it. Our warranty just warranties the part we replace. So if we replace your drive cable and your battery is dead tomorrow, you know, tough shit. You've got to pay for a battery. Uh, so if they're willing to do it for that price, I would have never encouraged you to use us because their deal is amazing compared to ours. See, I'm not telling the guy, you know, uh, and I did this in a much, much shorter than I am now, like much less words. And you know, I, I don't, you, you don't sell people by saying, no, that's not true. I disagree with you. You sell people by... Um, Really not, not arguing, not fighting with them. Because th- there are studies on this where, you know, when you argue with people, you pretty much get them. You get them to hate you. Uh, you get them to uh, say, you know what, I don't even care that you have a point. Now it's just a, a principle thing where, like, you're arguing with me, so I must be right. So I'm defending myself. So often, you, you know, you actually agree with them. And in this case, you know, I was agreeing with something that was, was, was correct. I mean, that would indeed be a better deal. Now, I know in the back of my head that this is all bullshit. Like, Apple, do, Apple does not replace a drive and a, and a fucking cable for $100. Apple tells you $750, go fuck yourself, it'll take a week, and we're erasing your data. This is what Apple does. See here, th- this and this, they take these and they do this. That is what Apple does to their customers when they go to their store to get something repaired. If you don't believe me, 
just go yourself and you'll find out why we make all this money <laughs> anyway so and he's like oh okay um now you know the the and the, like uh, in the so the you know everything works and the information's there, and I go yeah all your data's there and again you, you go to Apple you know they they're gonna they're gonna replace this and that and you will be perfectly fine. He's like well yeah I don't really know what I want to do, and now now I know there's got to be a pain point like I don't know what I want to do. They're a better deal. I've confirmed to you that they're a better deal and that you have no business using us because they're such a better deal in the most polite fashion. Now I know there's a pain point. And I go, yeah, they're going to replace everything. I mean, you got you know, you got a backup of your data, so they're going to replace your drive with a new drive that'll be faster. You're going to get a drive cable. And, you know, you, you, you just use a migration assistant to uh, migrate everything from your backup, then you'll be fine. Backup? I'm like, ah... Uh, I'm right. You don't have a backup, do you, you little argumentative motherfucker? So he's going on and on. He's like, I don't have a backup. Well, what, what do you mean? And I go, well, yeah, I mean, as Apple explained to you while you were there, they erase all of your data. So they're going to take your machine back. They're going to give you a new drive. They're not going to give you the old drive back. They recycle that. And then when he said, I didn't know that, now I know that you didn't go to Apple. See, now I knew that you were on some bullshit. Now I know that you were just, com just, you just get the fuck out of here, you lying sack of garbage. Because they tell you this very, very fucking clearly. And, uh, he's, and he's like, no, they, I didn't know that at all. They never said a word about that. I didn't know that they, do, they erase your data. I'm like, well, no, they're, gonna, they're not going to erase it. They're just going to take your drive back. They're going to e-waste it, and they're never going to give that back to you. If you go with them, you don't even have the option of getting the old one back. They're, they're going to send it off, they're going to fix all this crap, and they're going to throw all your old stuff in the garbage. That's just how it works. And, oh, pain points. And I'm like, yeah, all you need is the drive cable. Your drive is fine. I do this. You have all your data. And he's like, sold! Ding, 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 ding! So I got to figure out a couple of things. The first one is that he had never been to an Apple store. Completely full of shit. I found the pain points. And without being a salesman, without telling him why we're better, without even saying that you should use us, Got 125 bucks. 125 dollars. That cable cost me six dollars. It takes me no more than 200 seconds to put that in. 200 seconds. And you know where I learned how to do this? From a book. I am not a fucking salesperson. I'm not a social person. I know a little bit about psychology. I know a little bit about how people think. But some of these tactics I learned from books. And I and I look at her, and she was listening to this whole conversation. She's watching me, and she just is, she's just dumbfounded. Like, and I, and I looked at her, and I said, Now, what are your daily expenses? And she goes, I don't know. And I go, what are your monthly expenses? And then we'll divide it by 30. And we figured it out. And then I said, I made more than twice that right now in about five minutes. And you know how I made it? And she goes, no. And I go, I learned how to do that from reading a book. You don't look at reading a book like I have to answer a bunch of questions later on. You don't look at reading like this chore, like, oh, man, I did this, now i got to answer all these questions. Because when you're thinking about reading, you're, you're probably still stuck in that mindset where when you're done reading the book, now you got to answer all these dumbass questions that have nothing to do with the book. Reading is not, that's not, that's not reading. See, when I talk to kids about reading, I try to talk to them the way I would want to be spoken to if I was a child. See, most adults are dumb. Most adults have this idea that kids are dumb, and they treat them as dumb. Kids are not dumb. They're simply ignorant, smaller adults with higher-pitched voices. I don't condescend children. Well, this is one of the things that my dad taught me, uh, the way he treated me, and then he also tr uh, talked to me about it when I was older. You treat everybody in life with respect. You earn respect from people that you want to have respect from. You don't get respect because you're a parent. You don't get respect because you're a teacher. You get respect by earning it. And you earn respect from all the people you talk to. And I would try to earn the respect of the ki children that I talk to when I'm trying to get them into enjoying reading. And the way I do that is by remembering what it's like to be a kid. I vividly remember what it was like to be a kid. My dad very well remembers what it was like to be a kid. And I think that's why we're good at dealing with kids. And what I would do is I would explain reading to children like this. You know how you're not allowed to cheat on a test how much easier would it be if you were able to? How much easier would it be if you had a calculator for your addition exam? How easier would it be if, uh, if, you know, for the social studies test if you had a cheat sheet? And they go, much easier. And I go, now how about if you could do that in life? How about if you could cheat? You could legally cheat and get everything you wanted out of life. What would you, how would you like that? And they go, wow. And I go, well, you can do that. It's called reading. Because somebody else has solved the problem that you have, and they put it into a book. And for 10 or 15 bucks, you can read the book and find the answer to the problem. Instead of having to be miserable, instead of having to waste money, lose your fucking mind, and go, and go crazy trying to solve a problem, you can solve it from the book. 
And that's cool. Because, again, in the book, there's the, the answer is actually there. And, again, if you, you don't have to read Shakespeare to get the answer to your questions. You can, you can answer a lot of the questions that you're going to have simply by reading books that are written in plain English, that are written the same way that we talk. You know, some of my ma- favorite books, like The Mistakes Most Businesses Make by Roger Mendelssohn, the grammar and the spelling in this book suck balls. I respect Roger Mendelssohn for writing this book. I respect him for his opinions. But the grammar and the spelling of his book, let's not get it twisted, they suck balls. It is garbage. It's dog shit. There's so many fucking typos in that book. And the book is amazing. It really is. Uh, and, and, you know, again, he's, a, he's, a, he's too successful in business to care. His business makes him a good enough of amount of money. He doesn't really care about taking all the time to admit the right spelling into his book and the right grammar and have edited it. He just wants to get his ideas out there. And if you want to be a douchebag about it because he doesn't spell things properly, he doesn't care. And that's the thing. Again, real-world books are not like the books that you read in school. As I said, if Shakespeare knew that his work were used to torture children, he would probably take every single one of the plays he wrote right before he died and threw it in a fucking fireplace. You know, books are made to inform people who want the information. Books are meant to entertain the people who want to be entertained by them. Not just books, but forum posts, but news articles, but all of this stuff. And for some reason, kids are conditioned to hate it. And it sucks. And the, when I explain it that way, they get interested. And I explained it to that employee the very same way. I explained everything to her the exact same way that I was explaining it to the kid. Wouldn't it be great if you could, get, if you could pay for all those expenses you have just off of reading the book? What if you could learn enough from this book that you could make that amount of extra money every day? Because, you know, there are people who say, I got here because I'm lucky. I got here because I was in the right place at the right time. I have a successful business for this, that, and the other. What they don't realize, and what pisses me off when people say that, is a lot of learning went into that. A lot of trial and error and misery went into that. And a lot of it wasn't just straight up luck. It was being willing to learn. And, you know, granted, like a lot of it, I got to say, I give credit to the books. A lot of it was the books. You know, the books did teach me a lot. I'm not saying that you just read a book and you become successful. But the books did teach me a lot. And I'm glad that I read them. I hate when this shit measures the right way and then it doesn't when I plug something in and then it does again later. It just makes me feel like a moron. Alright. See if this shit works. Lighter fire, lighter fire, back lighter fire. Woo! And a lot of what I learned on how to do what I do here, by the way. Reading. I'm not a genius. I wasn't born knowing that, you know, how to use this. I wasn't born knowing that you need a microscope to do this. I wasn't born knowing uh, how any of this shit works, how a fucking amplifier works, how a feedback circuit works. I learned this from books. Books. And again, you explain it to a kid like you, you read the books, you get it, and you, you can answer the questions, and you answer the dumb questions, and you get a good grade on your test. Well, who cares? How about you're tired of your parents, right? How would you like to be able to m- afford to move into an apartment that is the size of a small football field with 25 foot ceilings where you could listen to music on your beautiful stereo as loud as you want any time of the day? How would you like to be able to take a three week vacation in the middle of the year and be able to pay for all of it and just say, I don't want to go to work today, so I'm not going to work today. I was able to become that successful because I was a hard worker, but also because of a lot of what I learned, and a lot of what I learned was from reading. Other people had the same problems as me. I was able to solve those problems by reading how they solved those problems, and then I applied it to my real life, and I got here. Now, granted, I still work. I'm still working here at 11, 12, 1 in the morning because, to be honest with you, I actually enjoy it. You know, I, if I go on vacation for a long period of time, I'll be begging to get back to work because I like having my puzzles to solve. I like having my challenges, my riddles. I need that. It's fun. But if I didn't want to do this, if I wanted to fly down to Disney World for two weeks right now, I could. It really, it's really, it just ain't nothing. And, and, and that's how I try to explain it to other people. 